take you to a couple of verses of Scripture this morning in the New Testament. Well, one's in the New Testament, one's in the Old. I'm going to go to the book of Galatians chapter 6, and then I'm going to go to Psalm 24. So if you want to go ahead and find those, Galatians chapter 6, Psalm 24. Mm, God is good, amen. Galatians chapter 6, Psalm 24. Lord, just have your way in this place. Do what only you can do, God. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. I love this. Let him who is taught the word share in all the good things with him who teaches. Man, that's good. I'm going to read that again. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But to he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Is that not good? Take your Bible and turn with me now, if you will, to the book of Psalms. They're going to put it on the screen. I think I gave you the right one. Psalms 24, verse 3. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in a holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart he who has clean hands and a pure heart now Lord have your way in this place do what only you can do we will make sure you get all the praise and all the glory for you are good Lord you are mighty in all of your ways. You have done mighty works. Lord, we believe you today. And we know that you're the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask or think. Now, Lord, have your way in this room. Lord, you have filled this room. Lord, now, do what only you can do. Lord, heal the sick, save the lost, set the captives free. We'll make sure you get all the praise and all the glory for it because you are good. And just like we were singing, God, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful in all, in all, in all of your ways. You are wonderful. Ain't he good? Come on, slip your hands toward heaven and just begin to declare into the atmosphere how good he is. Lord, you're good. You're the God who done a work in our life, every single one of us. Lord, you pulled us from the miry place, and you put our feet on a solid rock. You give us the opportunity, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the death. Thank you for the burial. And, Lord, thank you for the resurrection. And thank you, Lord, for the day where, where the power came in on the day of Pentecost, Lord, that we might walk in the fullness and the finished work of everything that you have done in our life. Lord, we're going to make sure, we're going to make sure your name will be glorified. Your name will be lifted high. We thank you and we praise you now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Lay your Bible in your lap and give the Lord the biggest praise of the day. Come on now, he is worthy. <laughs> Man, wasn't that choir good, y'all? It's going to take me a minute to get over that. Praise God. Awesome job, guys. Mm. I want to talk to you today about how to have a harvest mentality. I always start thinking about that this time of year. Harvest mentality. I want to talk to you today about how to have a harvest attitude. You know, there's an attitude of harvest that we can have in our lives. There's an attitude of, of harvest. There's a mentality that we can have. And we realize that at the end of every season, 
there is a harvest. As a matter of fact, what marks the end of a season is the harvest comes in. And a lot of times what happens is we prematurely throw in the towel, quit and give up when the harvest is just around the corner. The enemy loves that. The enemy loves when we give up and we give in, throw in the towel, say, I'm done. And just know this, just know this, if the pressure is on right now, just know this, if you feel like all hell is coming against you right now, you're probably in a position to receive a harvest in your life. So what would I say to you as your pastor? Stay the course. Don't you give up now. You done fought too hard. You done planted too hard. You done plowed. You done planted. You done put seed in the ground. You done, you done watered. You done nurtured. You done done all those things. Don't you dare give up now. You keep on going. You keep on pressing in. And you know that God will make a way where there is no way. Amen? I want to talk to you about a harvest mentality. I gave my life to the Lord when I was 22 years old. I've told you that many times. Gave my life to the Lord when I was 22 years old, and that was 37 years ago. You do the math and keep your mouth shut, all right? <laughs> hey, I know, I know that when I gave my life to the Lord, I was saved. I do. I, I know I was saved. I know, I know what God started in my life. I know what God started. And as time passed by, I learned that everything that goes along with my salvation and that everything that, that I would obtain through my salvation would be according to my faith. It would be according to my belief system. It, it took me a minute to learn these things. It took me a minute to get a hold of these things, of walking in faith. Because walking in faith, it, it's just that. You, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for when there is no evidence of it. And you walk in faith. And it's an everyday thing. And it takes a minute to grab a hold of the concept of faith and being able to walk in faith in your life. And, 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 and what, what's so important about our faith is the Bible says is all things are possible to him or to her who can believe. It, it, gives, it puts you in a position to receive the deep things of God. Your faith system, your faith system. I also learned something else. I learned that my belief system or my faith is determined by the type of teaching that I get. It's determined, to term, determined by the teaching that I get, by, by who I'm letting speak into my life. Be, be careful, and I used to say this to young Christians. I used to say, be careful who gets your ear. Be, be careful who you're listening to. Uh, but, I, but I don't say it just to young Christians. Now, I say it to people who are in all seasons of life. Be careful because I, I was telling Donna this morning, I said, you know, I've learned something. I've learned that, um, you know, that many times I think somebody's strong in the Lord, but you, you always have to have your guard up. And you always have to be careful because what the enemy will do, you might be that strong Christian that believes that, man, God can heal and God can deliver and God can set free. And you believe in all of the mighty works of the Lord. You believe in, you believe in Acts 2.38. You believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You believe and you're, and you're searching. You're searching for more of God. And then maybe you have an experience. Maybe you go through a season where you're believing God to heal somebody. Because, you know, you, you, you see God as a healing God, and it don't work out the way you want it to work out. Maybe, maybe there wasn't, it wasn't the type of healing that you wanted them to have. And then all of a sudden, what the enemy will do, he will put somebody in that place that will redirect your path. Just know this. Be careful who gets your ear. Be careful because every season's not going to be good seasons. Every day is not going to be sunny days. I tell you that all, it's not always going to be easy, but you stay the course. If it had been easy, if, if it, it's supposed to always be easy, then God owes all of the disciples an apology. Paul, you know, Paul, we talked about him a couple of weeks ago. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was stoned. Paul was beat with rods. Paul was made fun of. He was talked about. And even after being shipwrecked and crawling out of the ocean and he's cold, he goes and sits down and a snake bites him of all things. Because why? Because every day is not going to be easy day. Be careful who you allow in the difficult times in your life to speak into your life. Be careful who you allow because there is a battle that is going on and it's going on for your belief system. 
It's going on for your faith. It's going on for what you believe in. There, there is actually and literally there is a mind renewal that is taking place. And sometimes your mind can be renewed on the wrong things as well as it can be renewed on the right things. Always make sure that it's Scripture and always make sure that it's the Word of God because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The teaching that you receive will determine two things. It will determine how you see yourself. Mm, How you see yourself. Do you see yourself as a man of God or a woman of God? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, peculiar kind of people, you know, that's full of faith and power? Or do you see yourself as a person who has, has nothing to do with it and you're nothing but a worm? There's teaching that teaches that, that there's nothing that you can do. No, all you can do is just go through the things of life and deal with the things of life and just take it on. No, that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world and that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, my Lord. And I'm telling you this because there is a, there is a forward progression that I believe that God is always pulling us toward. I believe there are in the seasons of our life that there is a progression, progression that is taking place. I believe there's that, that sowing season, that sowing season when seeds being sown into our life. There's that growing season when, when, when we're nurturing it and we're growing in it. And during that time of growing season, what we, what we long for is the fire of God. And what we long for is the anointing of God on our life. But there's also that season of harvest, and that's when it gets good, amen? When the season of harvest comes into our life. There's a flow that God has. There's a flow that God has for your life, and there's a flow that God has for even for a church service. We work real hard around here on the flow. Uh, Pastor Matt and I was sitting in the green room with, uh, with some of the team this morning, and, and I asked him, what's the flow? What's the flow this morning? How, I knew the choir was, how's it going to flow? How are we going to transition? Because how you flow is important, impor- important in, in everything that you do, but it's also important in how you flow in life, in the seasons in your life. I love this right here in John 7, 38. I didn't give that to him. You can look it up when you get home. It says, he who believes in me, this is Jesus speaking, he who believes in me, the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow. Somebody say flow. flow. Shall flow rivers of living water. Do you understand? That's what God wants. He, he wants you to learn how to flow in the rivers of the spirit. In the rivers of the Spirit. He wants you to learn how to flow. When something flows, it moves. There's a moving. I'm going somewhere. There's a moving that goes on when something, when something flows. When something comes and be, it's, it, when, it, when it moves, it, it's a river. But when it stands still, it's not a river anymore. It becomes a pond or it becomes a lake. And that pond, that lake, that body of water is governed by a dam that holds it and restraints it into a certain place. And, when we, and, and, and in that place, understand and discern that, 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 that God wants the river of God to flow through your life. And what we have to do, even in our church service, we have to discern what is man's movement and what is God's movement. Because there's going to be times when the Spirit is moving. Now listen to me very carefully. I'm going to move on from this in just a second. There are going to be times in a church service, I want the river of God to flow. Anybody want the river of God to flow? I want the river of God to flow through here, but I want it to flow through your life as well. Uh, We're a church that, I, I like to say we're a free church. We believe in the movement of God. We believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost. We believe that God heals. We believe that God delivers. We believe that God sets free. We believe that God does work, mighty works. Amen, everybody? We believe those things. And the reason we believe it is because we don't just believe it and, and, and sit here and say, well, you know, I've never experienced it, but I believe it. No, I'm not one of those people. Neither are you one of those people. We believe it because we know that God has done it. 
God has done it. As a matter of fact, I tell people all the time, don't tell me what God has, can do until you've experienced what God can do. Because once you've experienced what God can do, can't nobody shut your mouth about what God can do. And they can say a thousand times that God can't do that. But you'll step up and you'll say, oh, let's, let me tell you, I know God. He's a healing God. He's a delivering God. He'll set you free. He'll do a work in your life. Oh, my God, pull me up. He pulled me out of the miry muck. He put my feet on a solid rock. Don't tell me what what God can't do. I know what my God can do. I know, I know, I know what my God can do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody experience the power of God in your life? It's like a river, isn't it? It flows, it flows. And many times there are going to be those times when the spirit is moving and the, the soul, the emotions can get in the way. But we, but we can't shut down church service just because emotions get in the way. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, emotions are going to get in the way. I hear more people say, well, I don't, go to, I, don't, I don't do the Pentecostal thing. I don't go to church where all that free stuff is. It's because I went to a church one time. They run all over the place. The emotions get in the way sometimes. It does. It does. Paul tried to explain this. and He talks about this when he's talking to the church at Corinth when he said, when the flow of the Spirit is moving and, and there are tongues, let there be an interpreter. He says, let there be an interpreter. He said, if there's no interpreter, then just let them shut their mouth. He didn't say, uh, take them out and beat them if there's no interpreter. He didn't say, don't ever go back to that church. He didn't say, talk about them. No, no, he didn't say all of that. No, he said, just, just, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Because just because there's no interpreter doesn't mean that the person who gave the message was out of line. It might mean that the person who was supposed to interpret quenched the spirit and got, didn't do what they were supposed to do. And I've seen it happen many times. Amen. So, so there's a flow. There's a flow. And some churches, some churches have learned how to flow in the spirit. And some churches deny that there is a flow of the spirit they they deny and they say that all of that ended way back yonder you know in the first century and they mock and they laugh and anybody who tries to flow in the spirit of god oh i've seen i've seen it happen so many times calling us cults man i've been called everything i've been called everything but a child of god i'm gonna tell you i have you know, people talk, I've, I've been called a false prophet, a false teacher, you know. We've been called cults, you know. If you're going to let the Spirit of God move. I, I, was, I was standing in a funeral home not long ago, and somebody said, oh, I, I know how it is over at your church. Y'all speaking in tongues, waving banners, got them folks singing it. Well, said, that's me, maybe. Hey, that's us, that's us, that's us. Woo! And why do, they, why do they talk like that? Because here's why, here's why. Because they cannot explain. And some want to get a hold of it with their mind and be able to explain it. But the reason they can't explain it is because they've never been taught it. Are y'all with me? There's never been, they've never been taught how the flow of the Spirit. And, and, and listen, this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, 120 were gathered together in an upper room. And all of a sudden there came a sound as a mighty rushing wind that filled the room where they were. And the 120 were baptized, somebody say baptized, in the Holy Ghost and fire. Somebody say fire. Y'all ready for the fire of God to fall on your life? Amen. Baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And the Bible says, and they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Well, don't you know there was some folks standing outside from the local Baptist church or the local Methodist church. And they say, you know what? I've seen all them folks, them crazy folks you've been over there having church with. I've seen them staggering around out there. They were already drunk. It was early in the morning. And Peter, hearing what they were saying, you know Peter. Peter's kind of bold, wasn't he? Man, all of a sudden now, you, you talk about bold. He was bold and stuck his foot in his mouth many times before he got the Holy Ghost. You ever seen somebody got the Holy Ghost and boldness comes on them? Peter jumps up and he says, these men are not drunk as you suppose. This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your, your young men and your young women, they'll prophesy. 
Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. I'll do many signs, miracles, and wonders among you, praise God. Hey, I'm that generation, praise and glory be to God. I want to be that generation that experiences the fire of God and the anointing of God and the outpouring of God on my life. I want everything that God has for my life, praise God. I don't want to miss a doggone thing that God has for me. Amen? And just like there are different rivers uh, with different strengths, different rivers, what makes a river is streams coming together. Streams come together to make a river. And just like there are different rivers, there are different streams. In this house, I want you to understand this, there are many streams that are flowing. And what it makes is it makes a river because the streams come together and intersect. Mm. This morning, this praise team up here singing, they can be a river, but they're not a river. They're a stream that is flowing. This choir steps up, it can be a river, but it's not a river, it's a stream that is flowing. Ah, this message, it can be a river, but it's not a river. It's part of the stream that is flowing. My prayer team that was here covering this house, it could be a river, but it's not a river. It's a stream that is flowing. And when all of the streams come together and they intersect, they become a river of God that flows through this place. And it begins to move things as we flow in the river of God. I'm talking about God's people being unified and coming together in a place where the anointing hits a place because the streams come to a place where the river begins to flow. Man, you ever been in that kind of atmosphere? When that anointing hits and joy comes on the place, people start laughing, and folks say, they're crazy. And they are, they're crazy for the Lord, amen? I've seen it many times where people just, just the, the room just fills with laughter. There's a holy laughter that come on the place and the river of God begins to flow. I've seen it where crying comes on a place, where it's not a dry in the place. I don't like them. Where it's not a, not a dry in the place. And everybody, man, it's just, everybody just sobbing and God's just, God's just doing I've seen it where praise breaks out. And folks running all over the place. And, and somebody walk in off the streets and what in the world has happened? You ain't been taught yet. Are y'all with me? Your faith has not been built yet to receive what is taking place. If you'll get yourself in a place where you can be taught the Word of God, ah, it's going to change your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. And since when a stream or anointing comes on a place and a river begins to flow, at that time, if the people will respond... <laughs> And they will enter into the flow of God and the move of God. The Spirit of God will bring tremendous blessing on your life. And you say, Pastor, what have I got to do to have this kind of flow in my life? Well, first thing you have to do is you have to, you have to go to the... You, I'm going to say this. I don't know if some of... You have to go to the mountain of God and have an encounter with God. Are, are y'all with me? See, your encounter with God, what it does is it activates the calling and the anointing on your life. We need the encounter with God to confirm the call and the anointing on our lives. And many times the way it works in today's society, if you want the anointing of God, then you go to school and you get a degree. The Bible's ways was never meant for you to go to school. That's good. If you got a degree, bless you. Spent five years in seminary. That's how long it took me. It was a two-year thing. I went there five years, all right? <laughs> Every time I leave, they say, we'll see you next year, you know? <laughs> yeah, we've argued more than we've done anything. I'm just going to be real with you, you know? I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It says the way, the way it works is the anointing of God gets you to a place. The way it works is it, it's not about your degree. The Bible way was never about having a degree. What it's about and what you're going to find out in the Word of God, it's about having the fire of God on your life. 
That's why we have, and the reason we got so many pastors that are standing in pulpits that are preaching, the, the preaching uh, dead preachers, preaching dead messages to dead people, is because they've never experienced the fire of God on their life. Mm. Because there is a fire and there is an anointing that God wants for our life. That's why churches are closing all over the place. That's why we got so many churches, because they're degree-driven. But a degree does not bring the anointing that breaks the yokes of bondage. No, a degree won't do that. Only the fire of God will do that. A degree does not drive out demons. Only the fire of God will do that. A degree does not set a homosexual free. Only the fire of God can do that. Moses couldn't deliver a nation. He couldn't go and do what God called him to do until he first went to the mountain of God and there he encountered God. How do you, how do you get, you got to go to the mountain of God and you got to get the fire of God. How do you get the fire of God on your life? Do I go to a conference? Well, you could. You can go to a conference. Do I go to a revival? You know, I heard they have having revival over there. You go over there? Well, you could. I'm not saying that there's not a, that you can get a spark from that you, you can you can get a but if you want to burn continuously I'm telling you people you will not burn continuously for God until you go to the mountain of God God's fire comes on God's mountain every single time and when people get hungry and they get thirsty they'll go after the fire of God and I'm going to say this, and I know this is bold, and I wrote this down too in my notes. If you don't find your mountain, you will never find, the, and, and the fire of God, you will never find and activate the calling on your life. So many people are looking for a connection. Man, I just need a connection. They want to connect with a ministry. I want to, I want to connect with a church. You know, I want to, I've heard they're doing great things over here at this church. I want to go connect with it. Nothing wrong with that. But I want to go see how their systems work. I want to go see how this works. I want to go see how their dream team works and how their growth track works and how this works and how that works. I can come back and I can implement it in my church. But what your church needs, and I found this out the hard way, is not all of the systems. The systems are good, but what they need is you to get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire in your life. And you can only get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire when you go to and you ascend to the mountain of God and you say, I'm not going anywhere until I get in the presence of Jesus. Mm -mm. If you can only climb the hill of the Lord and encounter the presence of Jesus, it will change everything. And I'm going to say this too. You don't need to you don't need to go home, build a website for yourself. You don't need to go home, build your Instagram for yourself, thinking that's going to get you the fire of God. No. What you need to do is you need to find out how you can get in the presence of God, and the presence of God will change your life. And you say, Pastor, Pastor, why in the world are you telling us all of this? Because remember, there's a flow. There's a flow, and there's a forward progression that's taking place in your life. I don't know what season you're in. Are you in the, grow, uh, the, the sowing season? Maybe that's where you are. Or maybe you're in the growing season. That's where most of us are. Or maybe you're in the harvest season in your life. I don't know. I don't know where you might be right now. But just know this. Just know this. That the harvest is the prize. Help me. The harvest is the prize. And what I have seen is I have seen way too many pastors, way too many leadership, way too many congregants give up long before the harvest comes in. Or sometimes prematurely because the battle gets hot. Don't you know if I was your enemy and I didn't want you to receive, you know, I... Uh, you know what I'd do? I, I'd, I'd try to cut you off right. And, and at the moment of the harvest coming in, Pastor Chris, I'd get hot and heavy on you. I'd go to Waylake, and you know what I mean? Just swinging with everything I got, trying to stop you from moving into that. The enemy wants to stop you from flowing into your harvest. So let me give you some things as your pastor. I want to give you some things that you need to know about your harvest. All right, y'all ready? 
25 things. You ready? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Stay with me. Just know this right here. Everything of value draws thieves. Everything of value draws thieves. That's why thieves break in houses. That's why thieves break in cars. Because there's something of value that is there. Everything, listen to me, everything of value draws thieves. The Bible says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I want everybody to look at me. Y'all writing? That's great. Look at me now, real quick. Just know this right here. Just, just give me one second right here, and then you can go back writing, all right? Just know this right here. You are valuable. There, there is so much value in you. And you say, well, pastor, you don't understand. I've just been through a hard time, and it's been tough, and you know, I don't even think God loves me, and I've been going through this, and I've been going through that. No, 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 no. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. God woke you up this morning. God gave you everything that you need. You got out of the bed. You got in your car or you got on the bus and you drove here and you showed up in the house. Can I tell you what that tells me? That tells me that God loves you. God is not done with you and you are of great value to God. Your relationships, oh my goodness. Your relationships have great value. Your relations, I said your relationships have great value. Young people, maybe I'm even talking to some adults, your virginity has great value. Your purity. Has great value. You know, people sometimes are proud, man, I saved myself until I got married. You know? And I, now, you know, I was a virgin up until I'm a, Virgin up until I, got, until I got married, saved myself. That's awesome. That's awesome. But you know what I see? I see a lot of married people who don't walk in purity. Oh, pastor, you know, I'm married. The, you know, the Bible says that, the, that the, the, the marriage bed is undefiled. Right. But that don't mean the pornography is acceptable. Are y'all with me? And what I'm saying to you, sir, and what I'm saying to you, ma'am, is everything of value your life draws thieves, and he is full of deception. And don't you think that that pornography is not just as addictive as that hit of cocaine? Because it is. And it will leave you in a place to where you say, well, you know, I'm not, I, I felt the guilt and I felt the shame of that. I'm not doing that anymore. But you'll find yourself, i got to have my fix. And what it steals is, it steals your purity. It keeps you. The Bible says that, 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 that we need to have, what, what was it said over there in, in um, was, I, was it Psalms I said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psalm 24, 3. I'm going to have to go find it. I got to go find that, y'all. I'm going to read that. It might take me about 30 minutes to find it, but I'll, amen. Psalm, Psalm 24, Three, listen, who may ascend into the hill or the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in the holy place? Why, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. <laughs> we say, man, I just want more. Okay, check yourself. Have an encounter with God. It's important that you have the encounter with God. Just know this, what he's coming after, he's coming after your harvest he's coming after your harvest so just know that that everything of value draws these i gotta go second thing your harvest must be fought for don't you ever think man i just i got this i got this man i'm gonna tell you can i tell y'all something pastor brother ray said that's right you know, you know can i tell y'all this listen we prayed ourselves we we pled the blood of jesus over ourselves and don't y'all think when we went on that mission trip and we was in the air for about 21 hours don't y'all think daryl didn't pray over that plane <laughs> all three of them listen daryl i pled the blood over them 
And you know what I call home and say, y'all get the prayer team praying and let's pray, 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 pray. Listen, we prayed over everything. We prayed over everything that we done when we went to the landfill, when we went to the, the orphanage, when we went to the pastor's conference. We was like, God, do what only you can do. And we got home and we're like, whoo, give me one another high five. Got home, man, we good. And then the attack hits. And then the attack hits. And then all of a sudden we're like, what in the world is going on? Just know this, that your harvest must be fought for. Be careful. Listen, oh, Jesus, help me. Be careful, church, who you let lay hands on you. Because some of y'all will let anybody lay their hands on you. I heard there's a prophet over young. I run over. You know what I done? I was about a year old in the Lord. I got in some trouble because I ran over to a, a meeting where there was a bunch of women. And they was telling us, y'all men don't need to come. I'm like, I'm going. Because I was, I was one of them. If it's, I want everything God got for me. So I show up over there and this woman lays her hands on me. And all of a sudden, hell broke loose in my life. Man, I was like, what in the, be careful who you let, I'm telling you from experience, be careful who you let lay hands on you. Don't just go get in any line and say, pray for me. You, the, unless you know that person, you know where they've been, you know what they've done, you know what they've been involved in. Amen. Be careful, be careful. Be careful who you let lay hands on you. Be careful, be careful what you say. Amen. Because you're not going to be able to fight for your harvest if it's coming out of your mouth. I'll never receive it. It'll never happen for me. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. you got to learn to fight for your harvest. There's going to come a time when the enemy is going to come and whisper in your ear. You're never going to get there. You're never going to receive that. But you got to be able to resist the devil. The Bible says if we'll resist the devil, he must flee from us. And don't you think for a second, not only do I believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost, not only do I believe in healing, not only do I believe in de deliverance, but I also believe that there's a devil and there's a hell. And what he wants for every one of us is to experience that and come against our life. But the Bible says if we'll resist the devil... He he must flee in our lives. Third thing, you ready? Just know this, that the battles that you're facing and the battles that we go through, they're strategic in their timing. Mm. If you go and you read the word, it says, many times it says, and after Israel had sown. In other words, after they had tilled the ground, after they had put the seed in the ground, after they had worked hard, after they had taken care of it, and they go through that season of sowing and that season of growing, that the enemy will come. He is strategic in his timing. The battles are designed just for you. The battles are designed to hit you right at the moment that they hit you because they're designed not only to hit you, but they're designed to take you out. Like a constricting spirit, they will wrap themselves around you. And the next thing you know, you didn't even know they were there until the pressure starts being applied. And many times what I see with church folk is they don't know what to do when the pressure's being applied. And those are the ones that'll call me in the middle of the night and they'll say, Pastor, what do I do? Well, there's only one thing to do. You got to get in the presence of God. You got to go to the mountain of God. You got to get the anointing on your life. You got to get the fire of God on the inside of you. You can't go anywhere until the fire of God hits your life. Well, it's when the fire of God hits your life, it's going to change everything in your path. Fourth thing. 25. Fourth thing. You don't get to choose who comes against your harvest. Wouldn't it be good if we could pick, wouldn't it have been, I, I thought about this this morning, wouldn't it have been good if David, if David could have picked which one of the Israelites, he, I mean the, uh, the Philistines he wanted to fight. I wonder if he could have looked out there across that crowd and said, and the Lord said, you pick which one you want to fight. I wonder if he said, hey, give me Goliath. That nine, the one that stands nine and a half foot tall, rest of them about six foot, but that's nine and a half. I'll take him. No, you don't get to pick who comes against your harvest. No, no, you, you, don't, you I, wish, I wish we could. I, man, you know what? If I could pick who come against my harvest, you know, I'd come up with something. I'd say, well, you know what? It's, it's okay. I, the, the, only, the only battle I've had today is I've had a hangnail. 
The only battle I've had today is, you know, I, I just got to decide where I'm going to go eat lunch. No, no, you don't get to choose who comes against your harvest. And many times the thing that we fight against is we fight against offense like Pastor Donna was talking about Wednesday night. That offense that comes and that offense that attacks and it brings unforgiveness and it brings all of these different feelings and all of these different bondages in our life. It brings bitterness and the next thing you know it's set up in our life. And many times what the spirit of offense will bring with it is it's kinfolk. Is religion. Mm. Religion. There's a lot of religious people in church. Y'all know that. Oh, they can point their finger and they can tell you all that's wrong with you and all that's wrong with everybody around you. My pastor used to always tell me, if you got one finger pointing at me, there's three pointing back at you. Think about it. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? Where do you stand with the Lord? You don't get to choose who comes against your harvest. All right, now it's about to get real. Number five, you ready? If a thief is effective in robbing you of one harvest, listen to me very carefully, they'll keep coming again and again until you defeat it. Golly, I thought that was going to get a little more action I'm telling you you take it from this old boy if he can rob you of one harvest he's coming back <laughs> y'all know he's a bully right you know that's what a bully will do a bully will come back every day what you got for me I got you yesterday I'm going to get you again today I got you last week I'm going to get you again this week no if he can rob you of one harvest he'll keep coming back until you defeat him. Are y'all with me? There comes a time when you must defeat him. There comes a time when you have to stop playing games and defeat him. There comes a time when you got to know who you are in Christ and defeat him. Just know this, that he don't have authority over you. You have authority over him. Listen, he knows whether you do or not. He knows his boundaries. He knows about the finished work of the cross. He knows that Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in hell. And he knows that Jesus turned around and says, that power I give to you. You shall receive power. Listen, listen. If he can defeat you one time, he's going to keep coming until you defeat him. So you might as well go ahead and learn to be bold. And y'all listen to me, listen to me. You might as well learn to get a little undignified. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about? Were you just ready to fight? I, I got that way this week. I did. I, got, I get that way every week. You know, there are some things you just get sick of hearing. You know what I'm saying? Just get so tired of hearing you know, what the, you know what I found out about the enemy? You know what I found out about the enemy? Here's what he'll do. Listen, I got to say it the right way. I got folks leaving, y'all. Let me. If uh, me and that woman right there, this woman, Pastor Donna, <laughs> let me clarify that. We've been married for 39 years. 39 years. Next year, we're going to celebrate 40 years of marriage, 20 years being here. Like, come on now. Yes. Amen. God is good. Amen. But I found out something. The enemy knows that our marriage relationship is a strong marriage relationship. So you know what he'll do? He'll attack our children every time. You know why? Because that thing's so close to us. <laughs> My daughter come to me this week. She said, Daddy. She said, I'm so sick of people talking about me. I said, I am too, baby. I said, let's go get them. Because you know what people, you know what the devil loves to do? The devil loves to tell lies. You know that? 
And, and, and listen, the way he'll do that is he'll bring doubt and suspicion and, and, and come against your character, you know, and everything about you. But you know what I told her? I said, hey, baby, just, just, she said, past, she said, uh, uh, pa- uh, daddy, she said, daddy, yeah, daddy, she said, daddy, she said, you know what? She said, I love people, just don't want to be around them. I said, how in the world you love people, you don't want to be around them? She said, because I just get sick of them sometimes. I said, welcome to minister. Give me a high five, girl. She said, I don't like them talking about it. I said, get used to it. It makes them feel good when they talk about you. Get used to it. It's all right, baby. You just keep your head held up. You know who you are. You know what you've done. You know what you stand for. You know what's on the inside of you. That's what they can't stand. That's what they can't stand. They can't stand it when you know who you are and you know what's on the inside of you. And, and she said something that just blew me away. She said, I just, she said, I just want to warn them that what they sow, they're going to reap. Wow. She said, and I hope it ain't, they don't reap it with their own children. I said, just pray for them, baby. I done threw my book. Wait a minute. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> we got to go, y'all. I ain't got but two more. Get, y'all work with me. It's just now 12 o'clock. All right. Y'all know I preach a one. All right. So we good. All right. <laughs> the owner of the harvest field, listen to me, write this down. The owner of the harvest field has more power and more rights than the thief. I'm getting some. I'm going get, to preach my message, y'all. Y'all ready? The owner of the harvest field has more rights and more power than a thief does. You know why? Because, listen, my father owns it all. He owns it all. Hey! See, see, when I gave, when I gave my life to the Lord, Daryl died. But I was resurrected in the newness of life, in my life. Now my father owns it all. I know who I am. I know who I am. Hey, point at yourself. Say, I know who I am. I know what God has done in my life. Somebody tries to say, well, you don't even know. I know. I know who I am. I, it took me a long time, but I know, Jack, who I am. And I know that there ain't no devil in hell, and there ain't no man on earth that's going to stop the flow of God in my life. I'll ascend to the mountain of God in a second. Woo! Sometimes, sometimes you just get sick of it and you got to go to the mountain of God. You got to get some fire shut up in your bones. You got some authority. Church, look at me. Y'all stand. You got some authority. Come on, I want everybody to stand up on your feet and say authority. Authority. Come on, say it like you mean it. Authority. Authority. You got some authority. I know you might be going through a season right now. You say, well, man, every hell and every demon's coming against me. You ain't got to lay down and take it. You got some authority in your life. Greater. I said greater. 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 Greater is he that is in me than he that be in this world. I am more than a conqueror through him. When you mess with me, you mess with my father. I've been to the mountain. Hey, praise God, I'm going back to the mountain. Moses went on a daily basis to the mountain. He ascended to the mountain of God. You know what he went to the mountain of God for? He wanted the fire of God. Listen, there comes a time when you got to drop everything and go to the mountain of God and get the fire of God all up in your life. It'll change everything about you. Woo! Mama, listen to me, Mama. Listen to me, Daddy. If you ain't praying over them kids, listen, if, if there's something attacking your children, you better get in the mountain of God and you better grab a hold of the altars of God and get the fire of God all over you and say, I ain't coming down until God shows up. Number seven. Y'all stay with me. 
Learn to stand your ground. The Bible says, having done all, to stand. But you don't stand alone. You don't stand alone. That's number eight. You don't stand, I'm going to hurry up. You don't stand alone. I love when Elisha was camping. He was at the foot of a hill in a cliff. There was cliffs all around him. His servant was in one tent. Elijah was in another. And his servant came out of the tent that morning. He yawns. He takes a sip of coffee. <laughs> Wipes his eyes. You won't find this in the Bible, but y'all work with me. And he looks around. You'll find this. He looks around, and he sees this great army that has got him cornered in that canyon. And he runs over to the prophet Elijah's tent, crawls in, says, hey, get up. I said, what in the world's wrong with you? He said, you got to come see this. Come, come see this. And they come out, and Elisha looks around. And he sees all of that army. They got him cornered in that canyon. And Elisha does this. He don't panic. He don't say, oh, God. He don't do that. You know why? Because Elijah knew who he was. <laughs> he says this. He goes, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he might see that they that be with us are greater than they that be against us. And all of a sudden, his eyes were open, and he saw a mighty army of angels. And that, listen, that was with fiery chariots that were around him. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what the devil has convinced you of. And I don't know what he has whispered in your ear. But I came to tell you something this morning. Don't you miss your harvest. You get the fire of God in your life. You get the anointing of God in your life. You allow the flow of God to take place in your life. And you don't miss the harvest that God has for your life. You just declare over yourself that greater are they that be with me than they that are against me. Great is the Lord today. He's great. And he's mighty. And he's strong. And he'll meet you right at the point of your need this morning. And that, and that, that is my God. That's what he'll do. That's what he'll do. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? If you're in this room right now and you say to me, Pastor Darrell, first things first, Pastor, I, I don't know this Lord that you're talking about, but I sure would like to know him. I'm ready today. Maybe, maybe you're like I was, you know, where when you was young, you prayed a prayer. And you know, but you know you hadn't lived up to it. Listen, don't you depend on man's prayer. No. When it takes in your life, it changes your life. What do you, what do you, you say, Pastor, what do I do? You repent. You come back to the Lord. He's faithful. If that's you in this place, I, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I want to pray with you. I don't want you to leave this place without knowing if that's you would you just let me know and slip, slip your hand up and I'm just going to include you I see yes ma'am yes ma'am I see your hand as well hold it up hold it up real high yes ma'am all the way over there I see your hand as well thank you thank you come on just be honest with yourself I see those two hands there bless your hearts praise God come on pray this pray this prayer with me and just know this, that this is not the end. This is the beginning. That God's going to do something special in your life. Once you pray this prayer, you determine every day that you're going to grow in God. You're going to seek the face of God. 
Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I'm coming to you now. And I need a Savior. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. I need your forgiveness. I do believe that you died. I believe that on the third day, you rose again. And I, Lord, today, I accept you into my life while I repent of all of my sins. I declare after this day right here, this very moment, I will never ever be the same again. I'll tell my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren in the longevity of life of the goodness of God and how you saved me that day, how you healed me, how you delivered me. Thank you for being so good to me. And I give you praise right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We had about four. About four people gave their life to the Lord. It's awesome. It's awesome. Now, if you're in this room right now, and you say to me, Pastor Darrell, I know the Lord, man. I know him. I know him. But I, I'm dealing with some, some things that are coming against my harvest right now. There's some things attacking the harvest of God in my life. And maybe that's showing up in your children. Maybe it's showing up in your grandchildren. Maybe it's showing up in your, in your health. Maybe it's showing up in different ways. I believe God wants to meet you right here. Would you... Would you bow your heads and close your eyes and, and I want to I pray this prayer over you first of all if, if, if you're one of those dealing with, with a harvest situation just throw your hands up and let me, let me pray for you wow look at that look at that look at that all over this house all over this house okay the Lord just prompted me of something we're going we're gonna to take it a step further can we do this step further there is something about to break off of your life right here in this moment because what you're about to do is you're about to ascend to the mountain of God. Come on now. I, I'm believing this. I'm believing this. I, I'm believing this morning that this altar right here is going to be the mountain of God for you in this place. And you're one of those sitting there saying to me, you know, Pastor, I know the Lord is my Savior. But I've got all kind of things attacking my harvest. Maybe that's your, your health. Maybe that's your children. Maybe that's whatever situation it is. And you're ready. You're ready. You're ready to be bold. You're ready to fight for your harvest. Listen, if you raised your hands, I want to invite you to do something. I'm going to pray over you, but I want to invite you to do something. I want to invite you to begin to move, and I want to ask you to step out, and I want to ask you to walk right down here to this altar. Listen, you ain't got to tell me nothing if you don't want to. You just walk right down here to this altar, and we're going to, we're going to anoint you with oil, and we're going to pray a prayer of faith over you, and we're going to believe God to touch your life. We're going to believe God that your children are going to be saved. We're going to believe God that your body is going to be healed. We're going to believe God that he's going to do great things in your marriage. We're going to believe God that he's going to do great things in your finances. We're going to believe God that he's going to move in a mighty way because you're not going to miss this harvest. You're not going to miss this harvest. No, this harvest you done fought too long for this here this harvest right here you're gonna stand your ground you're gonna stand your ground you're gonna stand on the word of God and you're gonna know that God's gonna make a way where there is no way amen come on now come on now when you come down here just go ahead if you're not comfortable lifting your arms just turn your hands toward heaven just go ahead and turn your hands toward heaven we got some men that's gonna come and they're gonna anoint you they're gonna anoint you with all this morning and we're gonna begin to pray we're gonna pray a prayer of faith over you I want to declare right now that there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper I want to declare that your best days are ahead I want to declare that everything the enemy has thrown your way and everything he has come against you with all all of that stuff, all of that bitterness, all of that hurt, all of that pain, all of those things that's going on in your life, that greater is he that is in you. You are more than a conqueror, not on your own accord, but through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's anoint him, anoint him, anoint him, anoint him. Go, 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 praise Come on, begin to pray. Come on, altar team, begin to pray. Come on, altar team, begin to pray. I know it's crowded up here right now. God's moving, God's moving, God's moving. God's moving. God's moving. Here, Josh, give me some of that oil. God's moving. God's moving. 
God's moving. God's moving. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. God's moving. Yes. Sing that, sing that. section right over here. We got Pastor Josh over here. He's going to begin to pray over this section right here. And listen, I'm going to take this middle section right here. We're going to begin to pray. If you feel led to go down and lay your hands on them, if you feel led to go down and lay your hands on them, then do that. But we're going to pray over you. And listen, I'm believing this this morning, that there is something that is about to break off of your life right here in this moment. Did you know just the act of faith of moving out of your seat and taking a step in this direction, faith went into operation. And according to the Bible, faith without works is dead. And the Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for when there's no evidence. I'm just going to move in an operation of faith this morning. Amen? Amen? All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, 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 we begin to pray over every single one of these people in this place. God, allow your touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow your touch. Allow your touch. Allow your touch. Allow your touch. The flow down. Glory, yes, in the name of Jesus. Begin to move. Begin to move. Begin to move. In a way like never before, God. Do a work that only you can do. We declare your goodness. I declare your goodness over this woman in the name of Jesus. I declare your goodness over this woman in the name of Jesus. I declare your goodness over this woman in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. Greater is he that is in her. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over this woman from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Yes, touch this man in the name of Jesus. Touch this woman in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I speak life over this woman, over this marriage, over this man, over this woman. Do what only you can do, God. We give you a praise. That's all right. 
That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. God is good. God is good. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God is good. Listen, He calls you daughter. He calls you daughter. You're a daughter of the King this morning. Thank you, Lord. Touch this woman. Lord, in the name of Jesus, everything that's come against her, everything that's attacked her life, we brush it off right now in Jesus' name. I speak life over her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak life over this woman from the crown of her head to the soles of, the, of her feet. I thank you and I pray, praise you, God, for the stirring that's taking place inside of her. I thank you for the harvest that is coming in a mighty way. I declare your goodness over her life, and I declare that no weapon that is formed against her shall ever prosper, Lord, because greater is he that is in her than he that's in this world. More than conquerors, more than conquerors, this man of God, Lord, let your holy anointing flow down over him, God, as he ascends to the mountain of God. For the fire of God might flow down over him in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing flow down over this man, over this woman. Stir up the gifts of God over them, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Jesus is your Yes. I declare one season ends and another season begins, but not till the harvest comes. I declare the harvest. The harvest is plentiful. God, I speak life over this woman from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I ask you to stir up the gifts of God inside of her. Anoint her in a mighty way like she's never been anointed before, God. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit rain down over this man. Yes, yes, yes. Let your spirit rain down over this woman. Let your spirit rain. Let it 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 rain. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, do just that in this woman's life. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Every attack, every attack, every attack. I come against every attack. Right now in Jesus' name. Everything that's been spoke over these ears. Everything that's been spoken into this head. I cancel out its authority right now in the name of Jesus. I speak that she is a daughter of the living King today. And God greater is he that resides inside of her. That he that be in this world. She is more than a conqueror through you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let it rain. Let it rain. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
anoint them. Lord, put an un unquenchable desire to ascend to the mountain of God, that they might obtain the fire of God and the anointing of God. Lord, I declare your goodness over their lives. Bleed your blood over them and declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I give you praise and honor, Lord, for every good work that you're going to do through them. Come on, all over this house, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, we can patty cake or we can praise. Which one y'all want to do? <laughs> 